Motor actuators are commonly used in the fluid power industry where hydraulic power is being converted to a rotary output drive device. These actuators are used as a direct drive or in combination with a gear reducer. Such applications often include vehicle wheels, conveyors, winches, and spreader drives. Fluid displacement actuators are typically classified as gyrotor, gyroller, radial piston, or external gear. While piston type motors can be used as fixed displacement actuators, axial and bent axis motors can also be used as variable displacement actuators. The gyrotor and gyroller motors are a fixed displacement actuator, which are low speed, high torque, bi directional motors. They are considered durable, compact in size, and inexpensive. These motors are used in many mobile applications where size, costs, and weight are factors. The external gear motor is designed much the same as an external gear pump. These motors are used in many high-speed, low-torque applications, are fixed displacement, and can be bi-directional. These motors are used in many mobile applications where size, costs, and weight are factors. Radio piston motors are the most robust of all motors and are fixed displacement. They are very low speed, high torque motors. Compared to their physical size, they are very efficient, however costs may be a consideration. These motors are used in many high load wheel, conveyor, and low direct mount applications. The axial piston motors can be fixed displacement or can give greater flexibility in machine design and capacity when used as variable displacement motors. There are two general designs, axial piston and bent axis piston motors. They are high speed, low torque motors, are robust and very efficient. They are used in many mobile applications where design flexibility is needed. Hydraulic motors are rated according to displacement and torque. The first consideration should be torque. Hydraulic motors are rated in foot or inch pounds of torque per given PSI, typically in pounds per 100 PSI. Torque is equal to load times radius. Large displacement motors usually have a greater radius for the hydraulic fluid to push against. Therefore, they create more torque at a specific pressure. A hydraulic motor that is rated at 1 inch pound force per 1 psi is rotating a winch with a radius of 4 inches. Our load is 500 pounds. The required torque is 2,000 inch pounds. Based on the torque rating of our motor, our operating pressure would be 2,000 psi. The second consideration would be displacement. This is necessary to determine the amount of flow required to rotate the hydraulic motor at the required RPM. A gyrotor motor has an orbital internal gear system. The main components of the gyrotor motor include the stator that is an internal gear the rotor, which is an external gear, the drive coupling, an output shaft, a rotary valve that is often incorporated into the output shaft, and the housing with the ports. The rotor sits offset in the cavity of the stator. An open cavity between the rotor and the stator is created by the offset of the rotor, which has one less tooth than the stator. One tooth of the rotor is always opposed to one tooth of the stator. The cavity is divided into two pressure zones by the opposing teeth. One side of these opposing teeth is high pressure and the other side is low pressure. The rotary valve ports fluid from the inlet to the high pressure cavity between the gears. Fluid from the low pressure cavity is ported back through the rotary valve to the outlet. Fluid enters the high pressure cavity and as pressure builds, the rotor tooth is forced off of the stator tooth. This causes the rotor and the rotary valve to rotate slightly. The output shaft, which is connected to the rotor by the drive coupler, also rotates slightly. Fluid on the opposite side of the cavity is forced through the rotary valve to the outlet port. As the rotor moves, the next rotor tooth and stator tooth oppose each other. The rotary valve allows fluid to enter the high pressure cavity in its new position and the cycle begins again. These cycles cause the rotor to orbit around the inside of the stator. 
For each orbit the rotor makes, the rotor rotates one tooth in relation to the stator. Since this stator has seven teeth, it takes seven orbits of the rotor to complete one rotation of the output shaft. This creates a seven to one speed reduction and a similar multiplication of the torque output. Torque output from the motor is a result of pressure against the side of the rotor in the cavity between the rotor and the stator. The diameter and width of the rotor dictate the area available for the pressure to work against to create torque. The roller motor is of an orbital internal gear design. The main components of the roller motor include the stator that is an internal gear with roller teeth, the rotor which is an external gear, the drive coupling, an output shaft, a rotary valve that is often incorporated into the output shaft, and the housing with the ports. The rotor sits offset in the cavity of the stator. An open cavity between the rotor and the stator is created by the offset of the rotor, which has one less tooth than the stator. One tooth of the rotor is always opposed to one roller tooth of the stator. The cavity is divided into two pressure zones by the opposing teeth. One side of the opposing teeth is high pressure and the other side is low pressure. The rotary valve ports fluid from the inlet to the high pressure cavity between the gears. Fluid from the low pressure cavity is ported back through the rotary valve to the outlet. Fluid enters the high pressure cavity and pressure builds. The rotor tooth is forced off the roller tooth. This causes the rotor and the rotary valve to rotate slightly. The output shaft which is connected to the rotor by the drive coupler also rotates slightly. Fluid on the opposite side of the cavity is forced through the rotary valve to the outlet port. As the rotor moves, the next rotor tooth and roller tooth oppose each other. The rotary valve allows fluid to enter the high pressure cavity in its new position and the cycle begins again. These cycles cause the rotor to orbit around the inside of the stator. For each orbit the rotor makes, the rotor rotates one tooth in relation to the stator. Since this stator has seven roller teeth, it takes seven orbits of the rotor to complete one rotation of the output shaft. This creates a seven to one speed reduction and a similar multiplication of the torque output. Torque output from the motor is a result of pressure against part of the diameter of the rotor in the cavity between the rotor and the stator. The diameter and width of the rotor dictate the area available for the pressure to work against to create torque.